Hey, what's up XR developers? In today's video, we're going to look at how to create haptic feedback for your game. Firstly, we're going to use the normal OVR input to create very simple samples how you can implement haptic feedback into your games. Then, we're going to install Haptic Studio from Meta, which was released at Connect 2023. I'm going to show you how to use it and how to run the companion app on your Quest. Then, we're going to export our project and install the Haptics SDK on Unity. Once installed, we can import our Haptics file that we exported from the Haptics store. And with that, we lastly implement some sample use cases with our new Haptics. If you enjoy this type of videos, please take a second to like and subscribe to this channel. If you would like to get the source code of each project, consider subscribing to my Patreon. And now, let's get started and bring your projects to the next level by creating immersive haptic feedback. The recommended path for haptics creation and integration for Quest devices is to design your haptics in Meta Haptic Studio, usually by loading one or multiple audio files into the tool. Then you would test the haptics directly on your device with the companion app which is available directly through Meta's App Lab. Once we are set on a haptic feedback that we created ourselves, we can export a file of type haptic. This file can then eventually be used inside our Unity application by integrating the Haptics SDK from Meta, which is a high-level API for playing Haptics files on our Quest controllers. Before we start with Meta's new tools, let's take a look at how to design very simple haptic feedback without using additional tools. For this, we can simply use the OVR input again, which we looked at in a previous video. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it already. I show you how to use simple haptics by using the sample project from the last video, you can either watch the video or subscribe to my Patreon to get the whole project. Let's open the Punch Projectile Launcher script and see how we can implement a simple haptic feedback to our gameplay. Firstly, let's start by adding a new line of code after the punch has been performed. Here we call a new method named Trigger Haptic Feedback. Make sure this is a coroutine. I tell you why we need this in a minute. In our new coroutine, we call the OVR input and its set controller vibration method. Here we have to enter some context. The first value is the frequency, which in this case has to be 1 for activating the vibration and 0 for stopping it. Unfortunately, we can only modify the frequency of the motors inside our controllers by using the haptics SDK, which we will look at later in this video. The second value is the amplitude, or in other words, the strength of our vibration and this parameter can have any value between 0 and 1. We set it to 1 here for simplicity. Lastly, we need to specify the controller where we want to play the haptic feedback on. Now, it is important to note that if we don't specify the duration of the haptic feedback, it is just going to end after 2 seconds, which is too long for our use case. Therefore, we create a new float value called haptic duration and set the value to 0.1. Now, in our coroutine, we can add a wait for seconds and enter our newly created variable. Lastly, after we waited for the desired duration, we need to stop the vibration, which can easily be done by setting the frequency and amplitude to zero. Now every time we shoot a projectile, we can feel a short and strong vibration of our controller's motors. Play around with the values and just set it to the value that suits your game the best. Before we look at the haptics SDK, Let's look at another example that is a little bit more refined. Open the trigger color change script. And in our update function, let's call a method named vibrate trigger based on pressure. Additionally, Meta offers us to target a specific area of our controller. So let's only vibrate the area where our palm touches the controller. For this, we can call the OVR input again, but this time we use the set controller localized vibration method. We first specify the location, which should be the hand or palm area, then we set the frequency to 1 again. After that, we set the amplitude to whatever value the pressure on our trigger button currently is, and then lastly we specify the controller on which the haptics should be played. Using OVR ovrinput.controller.active will play the haptics on all the currently active controllers. Awesome guys! When testing, you will see that this already makes your app way more immersive. This type of vibration could be used, for example, for a racing game, where your controllers vibrate stronger the faster you drive, or depending on the surface you are driving on, or in a fishing game, 
where the controllers vibrate depending on how hard the fish is pulling on your rod. I'm curious to hear from you what you will build with this. All right, now that we know about the simple implementation of Haptics, we can take it one step further by installing Meta's Haptic Studio. The link is in the description as always. Quest 3 and Quest Pro controllers come with so-called TrueTouch Haptics, enabling a new level of immersion and greatly expanding your creative possibilities. Once Haptic Studio is installed, let's open it up and as you can see the companion app called Auditioning App can be installed through App Lab. We can simply add it to our library on our quest from here. Inside the headset we can then go to the uninstalled apps, find it there and install it. Once installed, we can open it up and connect to our PC with the code that we get on inside the Haptic Studio app on our PC. After connecting, we can test out some samples inside our Quest. And you can already notice that these haptics feel a lot different from the simple haptics we implemented a minute ago. Those new haptics adapt very well to different sounds, giving us a very real haptic feedback of real-life objects and sound waves. On the Haptics Studio desktop home screen, click the Learning tab. From there, you can start tutorials that will guide you through the basic concepts of haptic design and track your progress. When a tutorial loads, it will sync automatically to your headset. Designing haptics is a relatively new field to most application and game developers. When designing haptics, using Haptic Studio, there are three fundamental ways to control the motor that produces the vibration feedback inside the Quest controller, the amplitude envelope, the frequency envelope, and emphasis points. Let's start by looking at the amplitude first. Each envelope consists of a series of points over time, which are called breakpoints. Each of these breakpoints can be edited by simply dragging it around using the breakpoint editor. When controlling amplitude, we are modulating the amount of vibration or force that the motor is creating as it moves. When viewing the amplitude envelope, we can see how the strength of vibration is modulated over time. In this specific case, it is rising until the middle of its life cycle and then descending again. The next control is the frequency. If amplitude controls how strong the vibration feedback is, frequency controls the speed in which the haptic motor vibrates. This is similar to how the gas pedal in a car causes the engine RPM to go up and down. Lastly, what if we wanted a short and crisp haptic feedback that should only last tenths of a second, like a sharp button click? This is where emphasis points come in. An emphasis point is a short, momentary haptic sensation. Much like a breakpoint on the amplitude envelope, the intensity of an emphasis point can be increased or decreased. After learning the basics, I think we are ready to create our first project. For that, we can first download an old audio pack from Meta that contains different sound files. We get sounds for interaction, user interfaces, things like machines, and much more. After we download it and unzipped it, we are finally ready to create a new project inside the Haptic Studio app. Click on New Project and select an audio file that you want to turn into a haptic feedback. We select a swoosh sound that we can then later use for our projectile launcher gameplay. Let's take a second to look at another concept in haptics creation, the audio analysis. Designing in Haptic Studio is a two-step process. First, you convert an existing audio file to haptic envelopes. Then, you can make manual edits and fine-tune the design. The audio analysis algorithm allows you to create haptic feedback and change that experience with minimal steps involved. We can see the three different envelopes on the right side, amplitude, emphasis, and frequency. These envelopes have several parameters grouped below them. In some cases, no further manual editing is necessary. However, if you'd like to play around with the different parameters and see how the haptic feedback changes, feel free to do so. I will leave a link in the description where you can learn what each parameter is doing. Once we designed our haptics and tested them thoroughly on our MetaQuest companion app, we can save the project and export the haptics file, which we can later use inside our Unity application. Next, we download the haptics SDK from Meta. The link is in the description. After downloading, extract the folder and open up Unity. Before we can use the haptics SDK, however, there are a few requirements that need to be met. 
our MetaQuest's firmware needs to be on a version higher than version 47. Also, the Meta SDK, or Oculus integration how it was called before, needs to be on version 47 or higher. We then need to use Unity 2020.3.26 LTS or later. Lastly, and very importantly, the Haptics SDK currently only supports the Oculus XR provider, but not the Open XR provider. So make sure to select Oculus inside your XR plugin management tab inside the project settings. All right, we open up the package manager and click on add package from disk. We then simply select the JSON file called package to install the Haptics SDK into our project. Once that's done, we can also import the minimal integration example, which is going to give us a good overview of how to use the SDK. You can see that it comes with a sample scene. Feel free to check it out, look at the different components, and play around with it. Now, let's create a new haptics folder inside our project and import our haptics files that we exported from Meta Haptics Studio. Alright, now let's finally look at how to implement our new clips into our experience by looking at the projectile launcher example first. We firstly use the oculus.haptics namespace. Then we need a new serialized field for referencing a haptic clip and also a private field for the haptic clip player that can be thought of similar to an audio source that can be played, stopped, or looped from code. Then we use the awake method to instantiate the haptics player and assign our clip to it. Inside our update method, after performing a punch, we call a new method named play haptic feedback. Here we simply call play from our haptics player and specify which hand we want to play the vibrations on, we can select either the right or left controller or also both to properly clean up our code when stopping the experience. We first need to free the haptics player inside the onDestroy method by calling the dispose method. Lastly, we free the haptics runtime on application quit. Great guys, let's give it a test. Don't forget to assign the haptics clip inside the inspector. You will then be able to feel a very short but sharp vibration whenever you shoot a projectile from your controller. Let's look at the last sample for today. I want to show you how to create a vibration based on the distance between our player and another object. Just imagine, for example, that this big cube is a heavy magnetic block continuously sending out magnetic waves that we as players can feel on both controllers. For this, we first need a reference to the position of our player. And like before, we need a reference to a haptic clip. We then continue similar as before by creating a private field for our haptics player and instantiating it in the awake method. We also want to specify a maximum distance within which we will feel the vibrations and the minimum vibration intensity that we feel when the cube is very far away. Lastly, we optionally can include a boolean that tells us when the player has performed any action. Now, here in the awake method, we want to specify that we would like to loop our haptics so the vibration continuously plays as long as we are close to the cube. Now, in the update method, we want to check if we have received the first input, or in other word, if we already tried to move the cube. If so, we would like to start playing the haptic feedback on both our controllers. After that, we want to continue with our normal logic from before, with the exception that every frame we now call a new method named update haptic feedback. In this method, we calculate the distance between the player and the cube where this script is attached to. We save the distance in a local variable and create another local variable, intensity, that stores a value between one, which is the maximum amplitude of our haptics and the minimum that we previously set, which was 0.1. With that, we can finally set the amplitude of our haptics player depending on how far the cube is away from the player. The closer it is, the stronger the vibrations will be. Lastly, we free the haptics player, as well as the haptics runtime like in the previous example. Let's go back to Unity and assign our player as well as the haptic clip in our inspector. When testing the game, you will feel the different vibration intensity, depending on the distance of the cube from the player. One last thing worth mentioning is that you can still feel the haptic feedback when shooting a projectile, only one haptics player can trigger vibrations on each controller at a given moment. 
if you have multiple players set to play on the same controller at the same time, like we do in this case, then only the player with the highest priority will trigger vibrations. However, if we haven't set the priority, like in our case, the players have the same priority, and therefore the player started last, will trigger play and interrupt the previous one. You can set a player's priority with the priority property. When a haptics player starts playback, it will interrupt a currently active player of the same or lower priority. Once the player finishes playback, the player with the next highest priority will resume triggering vibrations. This is exactly what happens in our case. The projectile interrupts our looped vibrations, and after that, the looped vibrations just continue like before. Also, if you would like to swap out the clip currently used by a player, you can use the clip setter and assign a new clip to be played back, like shown on the screen right now. If a clip is currently playing, it will be stopped by this call. Alright guys, that's it. We learned how to design simple haptic feedback with the OVR input and more immersive haptic feedback with Meta Haptic Studio, Haptics SDK. If you have any questions, feel free to join our Discord developer community where we are happy to help you. If you find this video helpful, please take a second to subscribe to this channel or consider subscribing to my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.